Hello everybody, uh, this is Yonder with You Know Fun. Today we're going to do our first uh, Let's Play for the site. Um, we'll be playing a really neat little indie game called uh, We the Revolution. It's where you are a um, tribunal judge during the French Revolution. And honestly, it's uh, I find it really fascinating, I find it really fun. I've done it. Um, I have not finished it. I haven't, certainly haven't beaten it yet, but I think it would make for a great uh, let's play. So, um, and that's something you know I want to do with my side eventually. So, let's go ahead and uh, give that a go and see um, see how everything works out. Wish me luck, everybody. We'll be doing uh, a few days uh, per video, per stream. Um, and there will, of course, be spawners and stuff. The first couple days, uh, I'll definitely be explaining the gameplay a lot to you guys. Um, let's go ahead and dive on in. Father. I am here. Do you hear me? I gave you the best I could. Why did you disown me? I have your blood in my veins. How could you? Do I mean nothing to you? Why did you grieve for him? He was nothing. I am better than he was. People will follow in my footsteps. Father. So. We're gonna get a little bit, a little taste of the story. The beginning is, it's not very literal. You'll see what I mean by that. It's basically showing you some of the game mechanics and stuff of the game. I will be doing my voices and I hope I will keep things consistent. Uh. Okay. Remember, er, remind me next time that I want to stop drinking this cloudy rock gut. Remind me before I drink it. We're disgracing Themis. Ha. Is someone coming? This is Raymond Devoyer. He is our uh, mentor. Uh, there is indeed someone coming. This is Matilda Fidel, our wife. This was bound to happen. This is Bernard. Fidel. By the way, there are three clues. Sometimes it can be hard to to tell first who is speaking. Uh, this is Bernard Fidel. Uh, you see his name, you see the little black thingy, the speech bubble, and his mouth is moving. No one else's mouth is moving. So there are the three clues. Uh, 
I told you. Papa. Oh, this is Frederick Fidel, our little boy. Bernard is our teenage boy slash young man, whatever. Papa, you said we would go. You promised. Papa had a lot of work. Yeah, a lot of heavy glasses. You promised. I can't anymore. I just can't. I'm fed up with asking. Mama is angry because quiet. Today, your favorite son wanted to prove he was more honorable than his father, so he started a fight. A five-year-old boy, for God's sake. Our neighbors wanted you to explain that to them, but, well, you were fighting for justice at an inn. Damn you, you bloody drunk. Mother? So. All right. This is the interface. This is documents and letters. Drag and drop documents to manage their layout. Click to display their contents. Over here we have uh, events where you can react to events. Ignoring them may have severe consequences. This is our notebook where we review detailed information about current events, actions, and characters. Uh, this is where we render our verdict. We consider the effects and decide the defendant's fate. Up here we have options, we have the hierarchy, which we'll get to in a minute. Here we have intrigues, which we'll get to later. Uh, this is influence points, which is the main currency in the game. We, you know, and notifications and global modifiers also go under notifications. So when things happen to change your standing with a faction or so forth, it goes up there. Also, you can find it in the notebook. Notebook contains your relations with the, with the factions. Right now we have the Red Fist, which is the people, the unwashed masses, if you will. The uh, blue flag, well, you know what I mean, uh, is the Revolution. And this is our reputation. Right now it's basically even. Uh, this is our influence points. You have a set amount of influence points per day. In the future, you will be able to increase the limit. Uh, influence points reset every single day. So if you don't spend them, you lose them. All right. Uh, and then... This is just a list of events and stuff, and this is the people. So let's look at the people. Uh, Matilda Fidel, born in Paris. She's never been outside the city. A woman seen by many as the perfect wife. She takes care of the household and of the children and looks after her husband's elderly father. She doesn't show outright, but she's determined to protect her children at all costs. They are perhaps more important to her than you. Bernard Fidel, my eldest son. A slender and handsome man, the weight of current developments in France is slowly dawning on him, igniting a revolutionary zeal in his heart. He thinks that the revolutionary judges should only be appointed from the lower classes of society because only such people can be considered untainted and able to work towards the common interest, not only their personal gain. His gullibility is more dangerous than Frederick's, as his actions can carry the same way as an adult's. People who excel in manipulating the young and weak-minded, weak-milled minds, excuse me, may take advantage of his alacrity. He's a fledgling yet talented fiddler. All right, let's go look at Frederick, my little boy. Naive and innocent, which is completely normal for a boy his age. He idolizes you and wants to be just like you. Even if, his, even if he occasionally disobeys his mother, he carries out his father's will to the letter. His favorite toy is a wooden sword that he always carries at his side. In his imagination, he fights against villains, just like his father does in real life. He likes to carve small wooden figurines. Hey, Ghostly Presence and Script Kitty. Um, we're, I'm doing a stream for the uh, Let's Play of this game, so uh, I hope I did well. Wish me luck. And it's always a pleasure to see both of you. Uh, Aldrich Fidel is my father. Once a moderately well-off merchant, today a bitter old man with nothing but feverish visions of impossible vengeance against the Renard family, who once deprived him of his dreams. For several years, he was unable to adequately provide for his family, to give his children the same standard of living they used to enjoy. Since you secured your new position at the court, your family was once again able to live a fairly acceptable life, and your father again began dreaming of returning to his former trade. However, Aldrich had grown too old and too tired to revive his long-lost career. 
Instead of enjoying the prestige and wealth of the Fidel family, he had to bear witness to the Renard family's rise to power. So he's kind of washed up and bitter. Something I think we can all identify with, no? And finally, Raymond, Raymond Devoyer, a man who has lived long enough to realize that justice isn't always the right answer. Skitty, I did not finish this in my first run through. Uh, justice isn't always the right answer. In his line of work, in these troubled times, the only thing that matters is survival, survival instinct. At times, it must go against the interests of the people, of other people, excuse me. A man with such a mindset knows that one must keep an open ear both in the parlors and in the back alleys. The blind Themis appears to him as a bedtime fable, fit at best for novice law students. Perhaps he perceives too many shades of gray morality to remain an efficient judge. All right. So, let's read the charges. All right. Review the charges and facts. This will make it easier for you to unlock questions for the defendant. Now, don't think of this as putting your five-year-old boy uh, through um, a trial based because he got into a fight. This is just the tutorial to show you guys uh, the mechanics of the game. That's all it is. So, the charge is assault to Judge Alexis Fidel. We have not expected this kind of behavior from your son, although apparently we should have. And now, if you can tell, this this word innocent is red, so you mouse over it, and that little picture pops up. That's a clue. So, innocent child's play turned into an assault on our children. <laughs> the younger one, Antoine, now has chipped front tooth. So we've got the four pieces of evidence. Uh, innocent child's play, then assault, and then Antoine, and then chipped front tooth. Should the situation repeat itself, we will react more decisively. I'm sure we can deal with the gambler and drunkard, even if he is a judge. We will not let our children be hurt. And we have an event. Let's see what it is. Make your decision. Each action may require a different number of influence points and have a different chance of success. Consider them carefully. Your addictions are no longer a secret. The fact that other children are bullying your son because of them is a minor problem. But who is spreading these rumors? It is likely to be one of their parents. They could have whispered into their children's ears whom they shouldn't play with and why. They might be able, they might even have spiced up the story a bit with a little lie. Who would hear the lie next? Okay, I can either intimidate the parents or talk to them eye to eye or ignore them. Now, if you notice, one moment. If you notice, we have three influence points. Ignoring them costs nothing. Going, talking eye to eye costs one point and intimidating them costs three. And let's just go ahead, go, go full on. This is the French Revolution. The game starts after the uh, storming of the Bastille and the tennis courts and all that. I believe it starts probably 1790. So let's do that. And look, we're out of points. So, we decided we're going to intimidate the parents. Uh, and we use all three of our influence points. Now we have the four... Alright, thank you, Skitty. We have the four pieces of um, evidence. This is the first main core gameplay mechanic. Questions. Gather information and influence the jury's attitude. We'll get to that later. By questioning the defendant. To ask questions, you first have to unlock them into or unlock them in the inquiry linking menu. Bring being the jury's oh my goodness. Being in the jury's good graces allows you to find out which way they will sway after you have asked a question. So we have five pieces of evidence. Finding links. Find the correct links to unlock questions for the defendant. Choose a line of inquiry and link it to the right category. Chances. While linking lines of inquiry and categories, you can make a limited number of mistakes. If you make too many mistakes, the whole system will become locked. Some cases may contain traps. Read thoroughly the files to find the line of inquiry that lines that are relevant. So we have five pieces of evidence, three categories. 
We have four questions to unlock. As you can see, there are only four questions. Uh, and there's one trap. So in other words, one of these pieces of, ev of evidence is completely pointless. Um, we can make two mistakes. If we make a third mistake, then we run out of the ability to discover new questions. So let's take a look at, okay. Uh, three of the category, okay, the three categories are victim, extenuating circumstances, and course of events. Now, Antron was the victim. We know that. Let's take a look. Uh, innocence child play turned into an assault on our children. So that's the course of events. That's pretty obvious. Child's play and then fighting children. Now, we have no extenuating circumstances. So either possibility of repeating is a victim or a course of events. Neither of those make sense. Or chip tooth is victim or course of events. They both kind of make sense. We've already got two course of events questions, so I think it's going to be victim. And we did it. We did it, guys. We have four questions. These are the four questions we can ask. They won't influence the jury because we don't have a jury. And actually, check this out. See, this is slightly animated. So let's click on it and see what we discovered. Fidel. That's me, Alexei Fidel. A judge of the Revolutionary Tribunal, generally considered a drunkard and a gambler. Protégé of Raymond de Voyer, who introduced him to the world of law and regulations. In private, he's an unremarkable character. So, let's ask our questions. How did your play turn into a fight? Our neighbor, or excuse me, our neighbors, Antoine and Jean, they were saying mean things about you. We were playing cards and they asked me to pretend to be a drunkard whom they would, you know. You were fighting them both at once? I had to. What exactly were they saying? Are you too drunk to guess? I was not asking you. They were yelling that you were, well, I, I told them it, it's not true. And they started calling me names. They called me drunkard son. Who started the fight? I can tell you who ended it. Uh, I think it was me. I kicked the one on the left and then wanted to get the one on the right. But, but they ended it. They knocked me to the ground and paid me back for hitting them. Did you really break Antoine's tooth? Frederick is just a child. Shut up, Bernard. I don't know. I don't think so. Did you hit him in the face? I think I kicked him, but not that hard. So, there we go. Uh, are we going to punish him? Alright. Make the most important decision. Condemn the guilty or deem them not guilty. And then we get to sign it. And then that's for later. Uh, again, this isn't actually in a courtroom. This is, think of it, it's just having a family talk. Now, I already am going to go intimidate the parents. But, you know what? We got to teach my kid. Don't, don't be, don't, you know, whatever. So, we're going to say he's guilty. Unfortunately, you should not start fights, regardless of the reason. Unfortunately. Those children are so small, and they already know the truth. The father of my children is a lying drunk and a gambler. Bernard used to worship you, but then he soon grew up. Now it's Frederick's turn to learn the truth that echoes in the streets. And you, Raymond, you're supposed to be my husband's mentor. Is that, is that really what you want to teach him? How to repeat your mistakes and lose his family? <gasps> Ooh, story. I was unaware that Matilda had such a temper, as was I. We will wait outside, as always. I don't know. I, she's just whining. I don't know what she's upset about, Skitty. Uh, so. Perry. Liberté! We were enchanted by the idea of freedom. We could not resist it. Whole families took to the streets. <laughs> 
France was never so happy. We were enchanted by the idea of freedom. Act one, Liberté, day one. Now, day one, the day after day one isn't day two. These are just events. Most of the time, you know, like it could be a week or a month later. Now we're getting a little bit more complicated. We're going to have an actual trial, an actual criminal case. There is an expected sentence. Find out which verdict is expected by the factions and by your family. Yes. So, nobody wants him acquitted. The common folk and the revolutionaries want this guy to go to prison. Let's check out the hierarchy. Oh, Robespierre! Owing to his passionate devotion to the revolutionary cause, he is widely referred to as the incorruptible. As the leader, leader of the radical Jacobins, he preserves order in the National Convention with an iron fist and, if need be, with terror. Undeniably the most powerful man in Paris in the age of revolution, and yet none have dared to defy him. <coughs> okay, let's take a look at the news. Neighborhood gossip. Most Parisians are ordinary. They have ordinary problems, ordinary consciousness, and an ordinary resistance to pain. They were not hardened by the revolution. The family of Excuse me, the father of the family that spread the rumor about your weaknesses was no different. A few punches were more than enough to convince his instinct that it was time to stop talking. So let's see what our actions, what effect our actions have. Common folk, down two. Reputation, up one. Because we got him to stop spreading rumors. So it's a net positive for our reputation. All right. So we go over here. Our relations with the common folk, down one. Negative one. Our relations with the revolutionaries, positive two. Our reputation, two. So I think it goes up to like 20 and down to negative 20. We have three influence points. And as you can see, all that's changed. We get three influence points every day for now. So let's take a look at the case ahead of us. Compiled by Richard Monnier. The charge, fraud. Jean Renard, a 45-year-old innkeeper, has been charged with fraud. He is accused of diluting alcohol in his tavern, tricking his clients into paying extra. Guests came in with minds uh, set on a specific goal, getting roaring drunk. But instead of, instead of staggering out after drinking two pitchers of wine or several pints of beer, they would sit in the inn until morning, still sober and completely penniless. The innkeeper's fraud came to light when one of the customers discovered the scam and caught the cheater in the act. The man entered the host cellar and witnessed him diluting the alcohol in the barrels with ordinary water. As a result, customers received only four parts of what they had paid for and one from the water carrier. Alright, so we have diluting alcohol, roaring drunk, uh, someone discovered him, and ordinary water. So let's talk to the accused. Raymond de Boyer says, In these difficult times, people like to seek peace at the bottom of a glass. Please introduce yourself. And this, by the way, Alexis Fidel, that's me. So anytime this on here, it's me talking. My name is Jean Renard, Monsieur Le George. I'm just going to come up with random voices. Let's just hope you guys enjoy it. And then the peanut gallery. The, uh... The rafters, the the unwashed masses can watch and comment. Nothing but a fraud! Now this is the icon for the jury. Systematically opposing the opinion of the jury may lead to serious consequences. Now remember, I get to choose the verdict. The jury does not. The jury just gives their opinion on the verdict I choose. So, let's talk to them. Let's get some questions. Okay, five topics, three categories, four questions, two mistakes, one trap. <coughs> okay, topics are adding water, innkeeper, diluting alcohol, customer's drunkenness, and exposing the innkeeper. Categories, motive, witnesses, and method. Okay, the only one that's really a witness is exposing the innkeeper. So let's see. We got a question. 
All right, now everything else, you'll see how this is uh, darkened. Now we only have two categories left. And check this out. There, there's going to be a handful of icons uh, over to the right. This one, the scale of justice, uh, means it almost always means bring in a witness. So please call in Thomas LeClaire. Please introduce yourself. Thomas LeClaire. I'm a regular at Jean Renard's establishment. Now, a couple things happened. One, I have two questions. I have to pick one. As you can see, there's a lock over the other one. Second of all, the jury, that's their initial opinion. They're like, eh, acquittal. They're going for acquittal, but not by much. See the, the red bar? It's almost all the way up to the middle right there. So, I could either say, how long have you suspected that something was wrong with Mr. Renard's alcohol, or how did you catch Citizen Renard in the act of diluting wine with water? I will ask the second one. <laughs> how how did you catch him? I was having one drink after another, so I, well, you know, <clears throat> I'm sure they should. Yeah, no, I know. So it happened that one time I got lost, and instead of, you know, I, well, I, I ended up in the cellar, you see, where Renard was adding water to the barrels. <laughs> oh! The jury is like, oh, to heck with this dude. Now they want him thrown in jail. Okay. Uh, diluting alcohol is not the motive, it is his method. Adding water or innkeeper or drunkenness. I think... Drunkenness is the motive. Okay. Now, we have two things left and only one category left. I think Innkeeper is the trap. Hey, Constantinus, great to see you. So I think, uh, have you played this game? Do you know much about it? Um, I'm really, actually, I'm just on day one. I think adding water is the method. All right. <laughs> uh, Constantinus says, off with the head, I, I like your enthusiasm. So, let's see. Do your clients drink a lot? Tavern regulars use tavern regulars usually drink a lot. So you've been selling plenty of wine? Quite a lot, yes. And yet you've been paying taxes on the amount of wine you have bought, not the amount of wine you've been selling. Is that correct? I don't understand. You've been paying taxes on four wine barrels, but by adding a quarter of wine to each, you've been actually been making the money for selling five barrels of wine. That's one way of putting it. Perhaps it's correct. I'm I'm not I'm not too good with numbers. You are not good with numbers. You're good enough to have calculated a fraud pays off. I wasn't aware. I'll take this answer into account. The judge has exposed the bastard. So, uh how do you feel about tricking wary citizens? Terrible. But all I wanted was to keep my business afloat. Others don't mess around for sure. No diluting would be the end of man. Did I just go full Jimmy Stewart? Uh, so you decided to commit fraud so as to not lose more money? If I lose my ta tavern, my family would starve to death. Do you have children? I do. One son and two daughters. Time to start saving up for the diary. Then why don't you send them to work, idiot? How long have you been involved in the illegal practice of diluting alcohol? <laughs> it was not an illegal practice. Everyone does it. Everyone adds a bit here and there, you know. In your case, it was a bit of one with the water, not the other way around. <laughs> uh, have, you, have you been doing this for a long time? A few weeks at most. It's hard to earn a living lately. I used to run uh, an honest business. Pure wine or silver spilling the glasses. Is there any proof to support your testimony? He lied to his customers. No reason he wouldn't lie in court. <coughs> that hurt. Okay. We're out of questions. <sighs> uh, the jury wants him... Uh, imprisoned, the common folk want him imprisoned, the revolutionaries want him imprisoned, nobody wants him freed. Uh, we don't have a report yet, so. Oh, by the way, this is where you can review everything just in case you want to. So, that's neat. So, yeah, let's throw him in prison. And let's sign our John Hancock. 
a citizen, a sentence, citizen Jean, Jean Renard to prison. Leave the condemned out. Huzzah! Long live pure wine! Bam! So, the common folk like us more, and the revolutionaries like us more, and we got four out of four questions. Uh, as you can see, there's lots of stuff that's going to slowly unlock, so, you know. Moving on. After trial, click to move on to the next part. Revolution, revolution went up plus three, or relationship with common folk plus five. So, four and five. Our reputation is still two. Now, there's the post-work part of your day. This is our good friend Jacques Louis David. Uh, what kind of voice should we do for Jacques Louis David? I'm trying to keep it consistent throughout the uh, throughout the the let's play, just for entertainment purposes. So, does anybody have any suggestions? May I remind you that you promised? Yeah. May I remind you that you promised to join me. I have a feeling that tonight's moon favors gamblers. Like that? That's horrible. But let's do it. Though it does not favor spouses. I know! God should greet us with wives who understand the importance of an evening game of dice. They, you know what? I think that's going to be. Um, we're, we're, I'm going to switch switch it up. Hold on. God, she grace us with wives who understand the importance of an evening game of dice. They should also know that the right amount of wine guarantees that lucky roll. Hey, I should go home. Being a judge, bringing a judge to the game has benefits. Other players will surely not cheat. That's not a strong argument. My name is Jacques Louis David. I'm but a humble painter, not a silver tongued judge. You are a sly politician, Jacques. Maybe even a diplomat. That's called foreshadowing. As a politician, I understand the importance of keeping promises. And you, my friend, are trying to get out of yours. So, we're going to keep our promise. Alright, but only for a short while. Surely my wife won't be upset. <laughs> we'll see about that, Constantinus. The moon favors gamblers. Late evening, the judge's house. What? <laughs> mm. You can berate me as you always do. Frederick sometimes imagines you as a deep sea sailor. He dreams that you visit distant countries, have wonderful adventures, and that one day you'll return and that you'll tell us all about them. But all I see is a man in a lifeboat and one of your oars is broken. A furious storm churns up huge waves that are fated to devour you, and I'm standing on the edge of a cliff, holding a makeshift lamp. Your children have already forgotten about you. They are far, far away. Your father died of old age, and your drinking companion now plays cards with other new friends. But not you. No, I'm still standing on the shore, hoping beyond hope that your boat does not sink. The vision is not so distant either. Your sons are still young, but the storm has already begun. If you don't turn around now, well, good night, Alexis. <laughs> I 
Before the storm creates the highest wave, you'll have to bow before it, alone. It will force you to become meek, and nobody will be there to see it. Nobody. So, this is the end of the day results. Fan the actions upon returning home. You can decide how you spend the like, how you would like to spend the rest of the day. But, okay. Various actions. Each action will affect other members of the family, as well as their attitude towards you. See these little icons? You'll see that in a minute. Each character's attitude can provide you with or deprive you of certain bonuses, like reputation or relations with factions. That's not always a good thing, Constantinus. Your youngest son is special. His attitude makes the other family members like you slightly more. Take good care of him. After various important events, you may find yourself with an action forced upon you. On this day, you become the victim of your own decisions. So, I went to play with, I went with David to play cards. All right, so let's see what happens. See, that's red, so relations go down. And then he's red, so relations go down. She's red, relations go down quite a bit. And my little boy's red, so relations go down because he's disappointed because he misses his daddy. Oh, at one liberty, day two. <sighs> Excuse me. Today, the people of Paris commemorate Jacques Guillaume Semenot, mayor of Etamps. He was lynched by a furious mob for performing his duties of France. The march shall symbolize the unity of our society and the hope that the most violent stage of the revolution is past us. Let us make sure that no other loyal servant of France becomes victim of such hatred ever again. Signed, King Louis the Sixteenth. Seminole was a good, loyal officer. Those bastards lynch him for observing the law. Will you join me at the march? So, are we going to go mar I think we should. Just, you know, because he was murdered by a mob. And he's, you know. So, yeah, let's go. We ought to show that we oppose the self-appointed executioners and stand alongside the victims. I wonder why the king has taken up the taking the trouble of showing up. King er, Louis the Sixteenth marching arm in arm with the people of Paris. That is unexpected. Uh -huh. King Louis? <coughs> Continue, please. I am merely an observer. Do not change your habits for me. Okay. I heard a thing or two about a young and ambitious judge of the tribunal. I was curious whether he was guided by justice or by, well, entertainment, as some would say. So, we have another case. First, let's check out the hierarchy since it's animated. Let's see who got unlocked. All right. Uh, first. Jacques Louis David. <laughs> okay, uh, an artist and politician. His paintings often refer to the revolution. When it comes to his political career, he's an efficient deputy of the convention. Those two areas of his life are blending together and fitting back on themselves. For example, when he led the closure of the Academie Francaise, the same institution that rejected him for many years. He is a longtime friend of Judge Fidel. I can actually say that word. I just stumble upon it 100% of the time, apparently. Stumble while well, trying to say it. Shut up. Okay. Uh, I don't remember his, his first name. Uh, Burel, the aging commander of the National Guard. He has seen enough to not put trust in ordinary people, even if they are able to start a revolution. All right. Those are two more important people. Oh, look. There's a little thing in our notebook. Let's open it up and see what's up. Poor Papa Bernard. Aww. Okay, let's see if we got more people. Yeah, we do. Okay. Um, Matthew Burrell. Okay, we've already read all. We read that for him. 
uh, Georges Danton, an attorney himself. He knows the law as well as the tribunal judges. The fact is, this fact is considered by many to be the only thing keeping him alive in light of numerous accusations of corruption and treason against him. Even more important, however, is his ability to deliver fiery speeches that result in the dismissal of all potential charges. His rivalry with Robespierre has become the talk of the town, and their official relations are often referred to as harsh friendship. Alright, uh, nothing there, nothing there. Alright. <sighs> Let's take a look at this crime. Alright. Uh, so this is compiled by Nathan Desroth. Desroth? Whatever. Uh, the charges are theft and burglary. The defendant is Olivier Mugla, a 65-year-old master locksmith who is famed among the Parisian burglars as an expert on unopenable locks. Last month, he was commissioned by the owners of a Parisian glassworks. Jean Roudet, Louis Roux, and Ferdinand Salon to construct locks for ornate chests for valuables, presumably as gifts for their wives. The craftsman praised his latest creation as thief-proof shortly following their completion. The industrialist houses, excuse me, shortly following their completion, the industrialist houses were hit by a series of burglaries committed by a recent newcomer to Paris, Hector Vian. The thief from Orléans was caught in the act and shot by Ferdinand Salon. Uh, an expensive turtle map of Paris with the houses of the recently robbed industrialists. That's the last clue. No, it's not. On this page. Uh, marked on it was found on the deceased. Surprisingly, Salon had given Mugler an identical map as advanced payment. The deposit was in addition to the agreed upon remuneration from all the employers. Further interesting information came from the owner of the Ginger Margot Inn. She recalled that on the night preceding the burglary, the locksmith met there with a man she did not recognize. Based on her description, we were, we were able to identify him as the aforementioned Hector Vian. The men allegedly engaged in an evening of drinking sponsored by Mugler. Evidence? A map of Paris found on Hector Vian. All right. Robbing the bourgeoisie is no crime. According to the case file, you are citizen Olivier Mugler. Is that correct? Indeed it is, Monsieur Le Juge. May I have a request? I would like to sit down. I'm an old man, you see, and basic respect for the judiciary requires that you remain standing. Do the names Salon, Rude, and Ro mean anything to you? Why are you so determined to harass an old man? They sound like the names of my debtors. Debtors. They are the victims uh, of activities you conducted. Remember, this is 18th century justice, so don't look at it through a modern eye. You mean locksmithing? Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight questions. We have seven pieces of evidence, five categories this time. Eight questions and three mistakes. So, a map of Paris is evidence. That's easy. A uh, series of burglaries is a course of events. Lock construction, as in he made the locks, that's a course of events. Uh, master locksmith, that's his personality. Drunken evening, probably course of events. All right, now we have only three categories and or three items and four categories okay now the common folk want him released acquitted the revolution wants him thrown in jail let's ask a handful of questions first i i always like getting witnesses first uh did hector vian did you tell hector vian how to open the locks in the victim's trunks, by the way, sometimes there are ellipses, and every now and then there will just be an incomplete question there, and it's kind of annoying, but whatever. I understand what you're implying, but consider this. If he sold the secrets of my locks, then my business would be over. Word spreads fast among thieves. Okay, that was not a witness thing. It was just an even thing. All right, so... Uh, 
Do you know Hector? Oh, you were commissioned by the victims to make chest locks. Who installed them? It was me, naturally, and all in agreement with the contract. My job was to prepare and install the locks, and the employer was the only was only to come and see whether the work was completed and pay, of course. Was the installation carried out at your workshop? No, on site, at the client's property. None of those idlers bothered to deliver the trucks to my workshop, so I had to strain my old legs. Does that mean you knew the addresses of the victims? How else would I get there? Blindfolded them on a wagon? Idiot. Okay. So the jury likes him so far. Did you know Hector Vian before? This is the first time I've heard that name. It's interesting, as you were seen draining several bottles of wine together at the Ginger Margot Inn. Is that a crime? No, but the question is, why are you denying it now? Was your drinking spree just a deception for discussing the burglary? Nobody I had drinks with that night introduced themselves as Hector. I didn't plan any heist with the Hector, Victor, or Hugo. I'm a locksmith and I earn good money from it. Burglaries are for vagrants without a job. Okay. That didn't go over so well with the jury. Do you recognize this map? No, I don't recall ever seeing it before. Ferdinand Salon claims that he gave you this map as an advance payment for your services. He claims what? That wicked wretch of a second-rate merchant? He gave me a scrap of paper as payment for making three locks and says it's supposed to be worth more than the 3,000 francs he owes me? An honest laborer being judged while frauds reign at large. Silence. So does the map belong to you or not? It does not. So where is the map that you received from Citizen Salon? I lost it, but it wasn't even worth the love of bread, so I surely won't shed a tear. But if you have it, maybe you stole it from me. You better make note that Olivier Mugler demands remuneration from Rene, Ro, and Salon. Now the jury likes him again. How much do you charge for your services, even though I already know the answer? 3,000 francs. 30 some that is. If you were a master locksmith, you'd charge that much too. It's quite a substantial fee. Indeed. So many costs to have a high quality locks made by a master with nearly 50 years experience. Idiot. And those masters never paid me a single franc. Whoa! That's a bit of news. The victims did not pay you the agreed upon amount? Not a frog. I'd beat the money right out of them, but I'm too old for that these days. He's getting too old for this stuff. So, Master Locksmith. And nothing sticks out. Marks on the map is almost definitely evidence, which it is. Famous Thief. Course of events because the Famous Thief came to town. Oh, good. Okay. Master Locksmith. Extenuating circumstances, it has to be. Sometimes you can uh, narrow things down. Not always. We did it! No mistakes. <laughs> so. Alright, let's do the... Uh, okay. We're, uh, let's do the two neutral ones. Did you give Hector Vian the map? With the victim's houses marked on it? I gave nothing to Achilles, Hector, nor any other Greek. Call in the witness. Citizen Jean Roudet. John Rudet in the flesh. You will not speak unless called upon. Naturally, of course. I just said you will not speak unless called upon, idiot. What went missing during the burglary? My house was the first one to be robbed. Alright, bye, Skitty. I'll see you next time. Thanks for hanging, as always, and thanks for uh, Green Hill. That was a lot of fun. My house was the first one to be robbed, and in my case, it was mostly valuables. El Rose House. He will not say it himself, and I do not want to go to prison. It was the letters he had exchanged over the years with King Louis. Darn monarchist! Salon did not lose a thing. He shot that vermin in the act. At least, well, that's, that's what he said. What happened to the items he had stolen? That still remains unknown, according to Salon, at least. Hector had nothing with him. Ferdinand suspects he had hidden the other valuables somewhere else. He hid the other items before robbing the last house? Strange. 
either you look upset, what are you afraid of? Or advanced payment in the form of a map, its disappearance, and the murder of a burglar. And a lack of payment for services. Let's, you look upset, what are you afraid of? Monsieur Le George, the crowd behind me. And, you know, know what? I do not want to go to prison. And Salon said that if I were to talk nonsense in front of the court, I would be transferred, or, or excuse me, I'm so sorry, I would be sentenced to a few years. Is that... Is that true? Citizen Ferdinand Salon instructed you on what to testify? No, he, he, might, he might have offered some suggestions on how not to get into trouble by speaking gibberish and clearly I failed because I'm, I'm rather a nervous person you see and sometimes I struggle to make sense. All right, we have two questions left. A, f a fool more than a witness. That's our bourgeois say. All right. Were you the one? Now see, I think I want to let him go because there's not really any proof at all. Um, the only question is, would influence the jury. So let's go. Rumor has it you're one of the best locksmiths in Paris. I should deny it for a modesty sake, but I will not for truth's sake. That cannot be true, though, as a random thief from Orléans was easily able to open one of your locks, or through your or two of them. Well, then, he must have been one of the best thieves in Orléans. Let's be serious, Monsieur Le Georges. Every lock can be picked with the right talents, even my locks. All right, now, should I risk it or not? Because I have the jury on my side. I don't have to ask all the questions, so I'm not going to. We don't have anything here, so I'm going to pass a quittle. The revolution's gonna be annoying, but the common people will like me. The verdict for citizen Olivier Bugler is not guilty. You may now lead the defendant away. Bravo, Mugler! Away with the bourgeoisie! To be honest, this does ha bear the marks of social justice. They would not pay him, so he had them robbed. There is balance here. Thanks! All right, now let's take a look. We're at nine with the common folk, one with the vivid. Okay, we still have three points left. I don't know if we'll use them today or not. I'll probably do two more days today. We'll see. King Louis the Sixteenth. There were people who truly loved him. He reminded the French they had noble ancestors. Do not be manipulated by people who are not bearing the burden of responsibility. This saddened me. Someone had advised him to say that. Someone who is well aware of the cold, inevitable wind of change. I did not pity the king, but those who will come after him as they will not have great ancestors. One of us. Frenchmen marched in, marched in the streets of Paris side by side, one line after another, to commemorate Jacques Guillaume Semenon, mayor of Eight Homes. He was murdered by a furious mob, punished for a law he did not enact, but was obliged to observe. Freedom of speech killed him. We understand this as the right to cast stones to show one's discontent. The right to murder people because you deem them responsible for your miserable life. Surely the people of Paris would prefer if we said that nothing happened. So, the common folk annoyed revolution a little bit happier. And this is what we did in the evening. Oh. Alright, uh... Your son is rather good with the viola. He is both talented and enthusiastic. I would prefer he was enthusiastic, as enthusiastic about the law books that I gave him. Maybe his destiny is to become an artist, not a lawyer. 
Mother likes to hear me playing, and there's nothing more boring than law. See, he would rather let his career rely on the humors of the people. Oh, that was supposed to be me, not Jacques Louis. See, even I get a little bit confused. There are many ways to rescue France. Believe me, our country desperately needs something to ennoble it. The power is in the hands of simple, illiterate, moronic, stupid, bloodite people. Let him rescue their souls with music. This is better than boring laws and clauses. See what you're doing? You're spoiling my child. I do not have my own children to spoil, so I'm focusing on yours. Speaking of which... Oh, no, 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 no! We'll get to that later. Uh, so, you attended the parade in memory of the lynched official. So, we had a story event, so we can't do anything. Now, see, he's blue, so that's going to go up. Why? Because, see that icon? That means he's kind of... He's in with the common folk. Bernard is in with the revolution. <sighs> Matilda wants me to spend more time with her at home, and my little son misses me. But that's neither red nor blue, so we're fine. So watch. That goes up. That goes down. That goes down. And that's it. Also, see the... Oh, never mind. There are thresholds. We'll get to that next time. That is our new symbol of freedom. You can Ooh, still yeah. smell the fresh wood. Freedom. Do you feel free looking at it? Individuals like us do not need symbols, but France does. Did you hear the news of the day? People are running around like headless chickens and yelling about Louis and his entourage escaping Paris. So, we will not be enjoying the aroma of fresh wood for long. Monuments like that are not installed solely for the purpose of punishing thieves or lesser aristocrats. <sighs> Excuse me. Do you think it wants to taste royal blood? Louis' flight was a stupid move, yet it seems it was planned. One of us will sacrifice him. That is, if they catch him. Is that why Louis visited us at the court? To manipulate us? Maybe deep in his heart he felt what the builders of the guillotine did. That someone has to be exposed as a traitor, even if there is none. Just a sec. Now, he said, that is, if they catch him. They're talking about the flight to Varin. Which was June 20th, 21st, 1791. Thing is, Jacques Guillaume Seminole was murdered March 3rd, 1792. So I'm going to have to think about that one for a minute or five. Cool. Thank you. Uh, all right, now we're talking to Antoine Tindel. Uh, hold on. I'm going to look up one more thing. When was he caught? When was he returned? doesn't quite really say okay I'll look into that later in my own time I don't want to take too much from you guys so let's go back to the game all right we're talking uh, we now have Antoine Tinville uh, if you guys have any uh, accent suggestions let me know as always uh, Welcome, Fidel, citizen Fidel. My name is Antoine Quentin Foucault de Tinville. I am the public prosecutor that has been assigned to assist at every tribunal trial starting for today. We'll see if I can hold this up. I should warn you, I'm uncompromising. 
Although I hope that we will quickly find common ground. In happier news, the construction of the guillotine has been finished and we may begin using it today. Oh, happy news. Yes, I have seen it. <coughs> Hurts. The king is gone. Treason. Anyone with information about his whereabouts should immediately disclose it to the authorities. There's a lot of voices to keep track of in this game. I don't know what I'm going to do with Robespierre. A lot of people say Robespierre. I don't. So, alright. We have two notifications. We got our daily allowance and hidden enemy. Oh, that's a global modifier. Impossible to know all the enemies in the big city. One of them is particularly good at disguising themselves. So that'll last for three days. No effects as of right now. So let's check out the case file. The two pages. So, Pierre Dacoin says, Rape and burglary. Oh, okay. The game gets kind of really heavy at times, trust me. Jean Hébert, the famous street urchin who killed the governor of the Bastille de Lalonnais and carried his head on the pike, has recently been detained. After the triumph of the revolution, <laughs> because, yeah, uh, he reached the nadir of his life. Though many people still consider him a hero, they do not care that the Parisian archives are filled with complaints about thefts, robberies, and assaults on women. All right. The current case is much graver, as Hubert is accused of raping 16-year-old Elodie de Pontalba. The charges were brought by the victim's father, Baron Thomas de Pontalba. I'm going to turn my voice down a little bit. Let me know how the audio is, please. Uh, it is widely known that Dave Pontalba was a relative and friend of Governor Delaunay. The crime allegedly took place in the tenement belonging to the victim's family. Jean was detained by people working outside while trying to escape the building. Elodie gave a written statement saying that the incident took place on a holiday and Jean used the absence of the Baron and most of the servants to break into the tenement. Once he was inside, he entered her room and he raped her. The incident was witnessed by Anne Michelle, Elodie's governess. It was she who alarmed the workers about the disturbing noises coming from her charge's room. A number of witnesses felt obliged to inform us that Anne Michelle is known for her psychotic jealousy and her numerous romances with the people of France. And we've got other pieces. This is two pages, but this this is the case file. These other two things are two other pieces of evidence. For example, on Michelle's testimony. Usually in the morning, Miss Elodie and I read. However, the chef had that day off, so I was preparing tea. Then I heard her screaming. I ran to the room, but stopped when I heard a male voice. I was scared and asked for help. The results of the medical examination. The examination revealed the following. Defloration? Minor attrition of the genital area. Bruising and hemorrhaging of the arm, spine, and face. From Dr. P. Gibiath. Alright. Uh, both the revolution and the common folk want him acquitted. Nobody wants him to go to prison or to face the guillotine. Great. So, they're bringing in Jean. We're with you, Jean. Please introduce yourself. Jean Aubert, the conqueror of the Bastille and vanquisher of the tyrant de Lone, hero of all Parisians. Thank you very much. Jean Aubert, you are accused of raping Miss Elodie de Pontalba, daughter of the Baron Thomas de Pontalba. Do you plead guilty? I don't plead anything. The bourgeois and her counter-revolutionary father are filthy liars. Okay, uh... We need to bear in mind the possibility of criminal collusion in these charges. <sighs> That's right. Those rich swans loathe their machinations. Even though I'm an idiot, I know the word machinations. The evidence speaks against you. Girlish duplicity and De Pontalba's plot proved nothing. Whew. All right. Now. Uh, Antoine Tinville is here, so we will have questions to answer. Did he confess the crime? Was his act kind of revolutionary in nature? And what made the defendant famous in the eyes of the people? Well, he uh, stormed the Bastille. 
Yeah, he definitely did, didn't do the other two. Uh, so, uh, Tinville is basically like our commissar, if you will. He's the, uh, the political representative. So let's talk to this idiot. All right. Eight questions, three mistakes, one trap, seven uh, items, and six categories. Great. Well, rape is accusation. Defender's personality should be easy. Uh, he's famous defendant. Multiple complaints is testimony. Oh, it's not testimony. Personality? Okay. Uh, okay, now. Uh, rape did not go black the way that multiple complaints did. So it can be used a second time. Also famous defendant didn't. Get used the second time. Okay. Break in is his method. Okay. Uh, Elodie is the victim. Governor, the governor, that, that's extenuating circumstances. No? Dang it. Is she. Okay, okay. We've already eliminated the. A personality and method. So let's see. Rape is testimony. Oh, there was testimony about rape. So we can ask about that. Rape can be used again? I think the house is probably the trap because location isn't on there. Uh, governor should be... Oh, motive. Because he hates that guy. LOD... Okay, famous defendant is extenuating circumstances. I don't think it's testimony or accusation. All right, one more question. And that's it, LOD is accusation. All right, we did it. We made two mistakes, but that's fine. So, Colin and Michelle as witness. <laughs> Citizen, what is your name? And Michelle, Miss LOD de Pontalba's governess. I'm just making this up as I go. What do you know? about the cases. Oh, that's me, my bad. What do you know about the cases? I thought it was Ken Bill, sorry. A batter is guilty and he can be killed. He used our relationship to get closer to the Baron's daughter and her her. What do you mean? He knew exactly when the servants had a day off and when the Baron left for the legislative assembly. Did he learn those facts from you? Not directly. He paid me several visits at Baron de Pontalba's house. Did it not occur to you that he may use his knowledge against the Baron's family? Nah. I see. Did the Baron know about your meetings? No, the Baron has more important things to worry about than the personal lives of his servants. <coughs> okay, we'll get to that in a minute. Why? Did you neglect your duties and stop looking after the victim? That day, the Baron ordered me to take care of the house. Miss Elodie didn't have any classes and she was spending time in her room. And you did not hear the accused entering the building? No, I was busy in the kitchen. I wasn't alerted until I heard sounds of the struggle and Miss Elodie's screams coming from her room. I find it baffling. You did not hear anything before then. I can't explain it, but I was making a lot of noise while cooking. Is watching the house not one of your responsibilities? Well, yeah, but I can't be in two places at once. So, the jury is now going towards prison and getting close to wanting the death penalty. So, here's the thing. I want to kill him. So I'm going to maybe not ask all of these questions. So, did you know Miss Elodie? Well, that, I'm, I'm leaning towards wanting to kill him, so I'm going to ask these questions first. Did you know Miss Elodie de Pontalba before the incident? She flirted with me every time she visited Café Procopé, and she came to every dispute between Danton and Marat. Finally gave that girl what she was asking for. So you admit to your guilt? Yeah, but it wasn't rape. Show me one girl that would say no to a hero. You say you met her at the Cafe Procope? I highly doubt such a I highly doubt that such a young lady would go to a 
place like that all by herself. Who said she was alone? Anne brought her, and everyone knows she likes to have fun. Are you talking about Anne Michelle, Miss Elodie's governess? That's right. So, this was not the first time you entered the house of the victim's family? What victim? Anyway, yeah, I was there a few times, and I knew it well. Just let me say that Anne Michelle and I have, have explored every spare us the details. God, Howard took a young whore for a walk. Okay, so, he admits... He doesn't admit to the crime, but he admits to sex. I don't know what that... It... Uh, I wonder if that's yes or no. Um, so let's see. How many of your previous victims have you raped? None! I've done many things. But luckily, I'm still young and handsome enough not to need the violence to be with a woman. Hold on, someone's messaging me. Anyways, um... <sighs> Then what were all those women accusing you of? You've got a lot of complaints against you, dude. I have no idea. They just, they, they didn't, they didn't complain when we were together. Were you ever sentenced for assaulting a woman? They never proved my guilt. Oh my God. <laughs> and they'll soon, they'll let go this time too. Then why were they making those accusations? Probably just wanted money. Okay, the jury's on my side now. The jury wants him dead. Uh, so, good on you, jury. Oh, God, this makes me... I feel creepy. Anyways. <sighs> Did you choose Elide de Pontalba for your victim because she's related to Delani? I didn't know they were related. You've been to their house. You've seen their man... Their, 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 their governess. You've been to the house plenty. I don't believe you. Then why her? She's young, soft-skinned, very eager, if you really want to know. Are you suggesting it was Miss Pontalba who initiated the intercourse? Who did what? Uh, but did she ask me to caress her? Oh, she desperately wanted that. She dreamt about me for a long time. Ugh. Victim is but a frail girl. Did you really have to beat her that badly? Why would I beat her? I didn't even have to undress her. She removed her clothes all by herself. She jumped out of her dress, unfastened my belt, and we don't need to hear the details. Monsieur Le Juge, I can tell you everything in great detail if you want me to. Did she take her clothes off because you threatened her? She would have threatened me if I had refused her. Go on, we're listening. Silence. Come on, gossip, go to the market. Okay. Now I could ask more questions. But I don't want to sway the jury. Now, everybody's going to be mad at me, but I'm going to kill them. And also, look, this tells you what happens. If we, if we send them to prison, then it, they dislike me less. If we quit, they like me a lot. But the heck with those people. We're going to kill this rapist. And then, we're going to check out a new part of the game. Okay, did he confess to the crime? I'd see, I don't think he did. He confessed to, to, rape, to sex, but not rape. Because, like, it, it's pleading guilty or not. So, no. Was it counter-revolutionary? No, not, not specifically. So, I think we're good there. Okay. I, citizen, I sentence citizen Jean Hébert to be guillotined. Leave the condemned out. Evidence against him was not conclusive. Shut up. Outrageous! What are you doing, you fool? Trade of the people, murder of our hero. All right, three out of three, good job, yay. Okay. Reputation plus one. I think that you get that from your uh, report if you do if you do a good job on the report. I'm not sure, but I believe that's the effect of the report. We'll find out.
maybe I could win the heart of the crowd. Okay, now this is another big gameplay element. Persuasion, discussion, speeches, charisma, oratory skills, all of that. So, guillotine, earn the favor of the crowd by delivering a speech or proceed directly to the execution. Remember, once you start your speech, there's no going back. An awkward or clumsy speech will earn you nothing but ridicule, ridicule from the audience. Ridicule from the audience that is being entertained by guillotine beheading? Not good. Crowd's attitude. Depending on your reputation, the crowd will be more or less aggressive. My reputation is positive, but not that positive. So, I can either skip speech, to heck with that, or let's speak to the common folk. All right. Before attempting persuasion, attempting persuasion is on the next screen, so right now we're planning. You may explore different approaches to all the topics of the conversation. After employing every kind of emotion, you will receive an evaluation of your choices. Each attitude comes with a set of emotions that can have positive or negative impact. Learn the effects to manipulate the people of Paris in any way you please. The higher your reputation, again reputation, very important, uh, the more you know about the speaker's attitudes the other whatever you know about the at the crowd's attitudes or if you're talking to a person or whatever uh you can also obtain this information by spending influence points i believe we have three no we have four influence points so let's uncover that okay so about the crime they are attached attached kind of means they're emotional i think so you can either be careless by the way, you can change this anytime you want until you click on all three. So you can be careless, you can be humble, you can be aggressive, or you can be manipulative. Let's be manipulative. Uh, when talking about the defendant, they are attached again, so they're emotional about that too. So let's be, let's try humble. And this way, if one of the, you'll see in a minute. And then they are bullheaded about the revolution. So they're, they're aggressive, so let's be aggressive right back. Okay, manipulation about the crime, good. Okay, humility is a terrible idea, so let's just do humiliation again. And aggression, or I'm sorry, manipulation. So manipulation, manipulation, aggression. I'm gonna, yeah, all right. So now we actually have to do it. Manipulation, there are no shades of gray to crime, only guilt or innocence. Let's see what they do. This is a uh, visual representation. This is the actual, the like level they're at. And then this red bar here, if it fills up, that's good. It went up. All right, manipulation again for the defendant. The defenders want to go back to the old ways. They defend them. Oh, the crowd doesn't like that. Now they went to intrigued. And then, uh, see the green? That That's the one that we chose. So let's go stick with aggression, what we chose. Only death awaits the enemies of France. And it fills up. So they're intrigued. So uh, we did pretty good. Success, success! The crowd is intrigued. We get plus three reputation. That's awesome. Sorry, reputation, I was like five. You decapitated a man for a little shuffle in the sheets? People, I rescued you, and now you murder me? Shut up. <coughs> so, that's... The core game mechanic number two. You're dead. Okay, this is an official. Due to the establishment of a revolutionary tribunal, we need to prepare an official stamp. I was told to ask you, citizen, because President de Villiers is <clears throat> indisposed. Uh, so chat, I'll need you guys. How much did he drink? I'll need you guys to uh, give feedback on the stamp. He was not able to say because he was too drunk. Shall we? All right, now we get to make our stamp. All right, so blah, blah, blah. We can do both these designs. Uh, we can do the top. If you guys see anything, let me know. I know I'm going through quickly, but okay. That's hilarious and terrible. Uh, that's good. The snake and the justice uh, scales. The book is good. 
The courtyard is good. The owl is good. The gavel. Okay, so do we want... Okay, gavel, owl, uh, courtroom, book, or snake and scales. You guys get to pick. I'll, I'll do the rest. I like that. Do you guys have a preference? All right, cool. The I think it's I, I in the French Revolution I would say it's probably not a temple. That's like a uh, uh, a courtroom would be my guess. We'll see. So now we're doing this. Thank you for your time. I know it's late. The stamp should be ready tomorrow. Good night. Now we can do. We can actually choose what we're doing in the evening. Work on today's trial. Unlock more question effects. Political debate. Uh, Bernard will like that. And Aldrich will not. Uh, Matilda and Frederick don't care. Uh, oh, uh, it's time for the grown men to talk about the revolutions or revolutions achievements. Should be an interesting exchange. Evening with Grandpapa. He likes it. The boys don't like it. Sit down with your father and listen to stories of Days of Icon. Reading together? Everybody except Bernard likes it. There's nothing like sitting with your family and a good book next to a warm fire, even so some, like Bernard, may think it dull. Or spend the evening gambling. Grandpa likes it, everybody else just likes it. Well, Frederick doesn't care. We're going to do reading together because it's mostly positive. So, you'll notice uh, influence with the people will go up above this line. That's our threshold. So that goes up. Oh, come on, Aldrich. That goes down to almost the threshold. That goes up, and that goes up. All right, our wife is neutral. Our little boy and the grandpa almost really love us, and our stupid teenage son almost hates us. But nobody's at the threshold yet. There will be a, a rela relations bonuses or penalties if one of those thresholds is crossed. Matthew Borrell. Okay. Uh, tragically, we're losing control of the streets. People feel betrayed by the king and some believe him to be a spy trying to elude justice. Uh, special means are recommended when suppressing unrest. We only need an opinion from the judges to make sure we are working legally. In other words, you need their blessing to shoot protesters. People can't control their emotions and hurting other citizens and are hurting other citizens as a result. Look at the windows. Ha ha ha. Next time, they may do something worse than just throw rocks. So, <coughs> It pains us to see unrest growing in the streets of Paris. Commander Chief Perel has informed us that the guard is no longer able to control the situation through peaceful means. It is recommended that he be allowed to use more immediate methods to protect the innocent civilians. But we would like to know the tribunal's opinion in that matter. I the uh, okay so. Uh, okay, it's recommended that he be allowed to use force in extreme circumstances. <laughs> uh, Raymond Devoyer says, I approve of the National Guard's use of force against ruffians ruining the capital. So everybody wants me to approve this. So I'm going to be a coward and just approve it. The Guard is tasked with protecting innocents from those who are unable to control their behavior. I approve of greater freedom in the use of the National Guard. And we get to use our stamp. Isn't that amazing? I'm so happy! Alright. Let's hope it's not too late to stop the madness. That's an interesting euphemism for musket fire. Okay. The mob wanted to act as both judge and jury again and hang people from the street lamps. Poor Pochard was almost hanged. Pochard? Cloud Pochard? Exactly. Your beloved tutor of your Frederick. 
You had to dismiss him after the incident with the oath of clergy, did you not? Yes, Frederick tells me from time to time that he misses his teacher. Uh-oh. What are you doing? The trial's about to be- Oh, what are you doing? The trial's about to begin. It's about Monsieur Pochard. News travels fast. He's been accused of counter-revolutionary activities. You know him. It cannot be true. It's not so simple. Leave before somebody hears us. Papa, please. Go home. Think about the family for once at least. Papa. Great. We have three uh, sentences to choose from. Three different opinions. The family wants him acquitted. The revolution wants him to go to prison. And the common folk want the death penalty. So let's check out the hierarchy. I don't know. If, I mean, yeah, it wasn't animated. Nothing changed. So we did a little bit good. Sometimes the smallest gesture can mean the world. A flap of your wings to send a buzzer to positive changes someone's way. Okay, whatever. <sighs> Alright, let's look at the case file. Compiled by Nathan Desa Roth. Cloud Pochard, a 20... Oh wait, charges are counter-revolution and treason. Yeah. A 26-year-old vicar and tutor, son of a cobbler, believes in Enlightenment ideals. After refusing to adhere, adjure... Excuse me. After refusing to adjure the civil constitution of the clergy, he was removed from his parish, prohibited by carrying, from carrying out his duties and sentenced to banishment. Despite this, he stayed in Paris and continued his work as a tutor, which he started before 1789. Pochard was captured in the streets by fortuitous circumstance. A guard officer present during his trial a few months ago recognized him and did not hesitate to act. Following an investigation, Pochard was accused of spying and spreading counter-revolutionary propaganda in order to spare a foreign intervention that would end the revolution. Correspondence with Archbishop Jean Arsène de Brote, I'm, I don't know how to say that, so I'm just going to say Brote, was found in a room Pochard had been renting from Marie Gamay. In it, the clergyman asked for information about the unrest and the supporters of the monarchy in hiding. Riches were also found, a golden chalice and a reliquary. Moreover, the director of the orphanages, Cloud Totten, testified that the tutor were questioned the laws of the revolution in front of the students, stating it was less important than the laws handed down by God. And a piece of evidence is the letter to Claude Pochard. So, let's check out the letter. Dear Claude, remember to stay strong in your faith and complete your duties with dignity. Tell me how our brothers in faith are doing, as well as the church in these desperate times. May God protect you, Jean Arsène. Okay, the questions we need to know. What valuables? Okay, we already know that. The Golden Chalice and the Reliquary. Where, what, or where were the traitors whom the defendant was corresponding with located? We don't know yet. When and where the defendant's crime, the defendant corrupt the people of Paris? Um, the lessons at the orphanage, I think. And how much did he earn from his espionage? It doesn't, we don't know yet. All right, so let's start. Please introduce yourself. Monsieur Le Jules, you know me. State your personal information or there will be consequences. Claude Pochard, Monsieur Le Jules. You stand accused of spying for the counter-revolutionaries and criticizing the existing order. Do you admit to these crimes? I am innocent. The accusation is exaggerated and comes from the ill will of the accusers. Suggesting that the revolutionary government is acting in ill will. Typical of a priest. All right. Oh my god. Eight questions, three mistakes, seven items, five categories. Okay. Church riches, that's got to be evidence. Letter is evidence, literally. Okay. Spreading propaganda is the accusation. All right. It's spreading propaganda. It's kind of revolution. Okay. Banishment's course of events, I believe. Parish priest is the personality. There are no traps. Espionage is the accusation. Tutor is the personality. And banishment is course of events. Oh my god! Was that easy or did I just... Am I just awesome? 
Okay, summon the witnesses. The witness Marie Gemme. Citizen, what is your name? Marie Gemme, Monsieur Le Juge. Sorry, it did whatever my brain comes up with immediately. Okay, blah, blah, blah. did the accused maintain extensive correspondence? Meaning? Did he receive many letters? I don't remember any letters with his name. Perhaps he had a rich social life? Did he entertain many guests? I don't remember anyone visiting him at all. He wasn't there most of the time anyway. He just used the room to sleep. Where would he go? I don't ask my guests about things like that. All right, jury is middling, but still wants him thrown in jail, so. Did he ever criticize the revolution and its accomplishments? Once he said that instead of beheading, they could do something about the economy and teaching. That the children are hungry and, well, you know, can't read or write. Did he ever question the law? Now that I think about it, maybe he did. One evening, he complained that the law didn't work. That a smart person would send all the kids to school, by force if need be. Priests lectured our nation for a thousand years and nothing good came of it. He's right! They gave us nothing more than hunger and disease. Does the accuse have anything to say? Just what Madame Guinea said. I only want a decent and universal education for the youngest. Is that really criticizing the revolution? One of our slogans is equality. Okay. Now, as you can see, all the questions are either are leading the jury one or the way or the other. So, what did you teach? The caregivers and orphanages only pay for reading and writing lessons. So why did the accused teach the children that God's law standed above that of the revolution? You spread superstition and counter-revolutionary propaganda. That's a misunderstanding. The children I teach are unable to understand such complicated matters. The accused's explanation further incriminates him. If they are unable to understand the topic, why would he even discuss it at all? The church spreads ignorance and takes our money. Stupid second estate. No, wait. First estate? Ours is only answering the questions from the director of the orphanages in Gombiere. I said that God's law stood above ba my banishment. It is God's law that prevent prohibits me from leaving the country. I have a duty to help those in need. Okay, hold on. Traders, uh, okay, where were they located and how much did he make? So let's ask those. What stipend does the accused receive as a teacher? Two francs a week. But most people give me food instead. Bread, butter, sometimes wine. Does it not bother you that the poor have to take food from their children to give it to you? Of course it bothers me, but I have to eat too. <coughs> He keeps gold on rivers by it and still takes food from the poor. We demand an explanation. Where does the gold come from? It is not from your fellow cons is it not from your fellow conspirators abroad? Of course not. It belongs to the parish in Compagne, which is currently under my care. The gold is not my property. Okay, so he's holding on to two items. He's not holding on to money. And he didn't sell the blood query or the golden chalice. So, I mean, that's fair. Uh, why did the accused continue teaching instead of leaving France? My duty is to help others. If I am unable to help with the priest, oh yeah, two francs, francs. I want to at least share some of my knowledge. Your knowledge is Catholic propaganda. I prefer the term Catholic values. Okay, hold on. So he makes two francs a week. All right, where were the traitors located? Uh, let's see. No, no, no. Okay, that's the location. That's, okay, what information did the accused manage to convey to Archbishop de Bretel? I don't know. No. I had no connection with the Archbishop. Why would he be interested in the parish priest's help? What about your letter? We have it in our files. You receive instructions from the Archbishop. Pump dog! Behead the traitor! 
It is not a simple. It is a simple letter. It is not instructions, and it is not from the archbishop, but from my parish priest in Compan, Jean Arsène Carreto. Where is he now? I only know that he plans to leave for Switzerland. He may have changed his mind. Those lines are thought to respond to the letter. What a coincidence! Archbishop de Portel currently resides in Switzerland. It is indeed a coincidence. Many clergymen reside in Switzerland, don't you know? Who believes that? So, Switzerland. So, we've got it all. Yeah! That's a perfect signature. Thank you very much. All right. I think we'll be able to... We can't get him acquitted. We can't convince the jury to acquit him. Or to want his acquittal. Uh, we can't prevent the jury from wanting him beheaded, though. Let's take a look. Oh, uh, everybody dislikes me. Let's take a look at the options. Acquittal. Whoa. Prison. Not bad. Death penalty. No. I'm leaning towards prison or acquittal. Uh, but acquittal's going to be super expensive for me. All right. The accused travels extensively around, extensively around the Paris department. To what end? I take the wherever I can find stones. Doing that requires time and effort. I must admit. Is that why you receive gold from your fellow conspirators abroad? He travels around France to spy on people. The only money I see comes from my students' caregivers. It is not at all immodest. So where do the riches found in your room come from? They were liturgical. Accoutrements. I saved them from the founder of the church in Compana. I would rather go hungry than to sell them. Fanatic! Thief! Pillow superstition! Alright. Now, the jury is really close to wanting acquittal. Did the accused celebrate masses despite the ban? There are no churches where I could do that, you moron. Then what purpose do the childish and reliquary possessed by the accused serve? Private religious practice. You are prohibited from administering sacraments. It is not sacrament, merely prayer. The declaration of the rights and man and of the citizen allow me to pray. You should be familiar with the document. That is beside the point. By promoting superstitions in a progressive country, you are spreading sedition. Okay, uh, I don't want to ask the last one because I'm going to send him to prison. Oh, God. Oh. I already did everything there. And I don't want to risk kicking off the jury. So, send him to prison. Sorry, Frederick. I'm going to make my little boy cry. I sentence Citizen Cloud Prashard to prison. Leave the condemned out. Who saved the priest? He showed mercy to the enemy of the revolution. He ought to have been killed. I have nothing else to say. <sighs> Alright, so I think we probably gained reputation for that. All right, let's go. Yeah, reputation plus one, good. All right, so one more, one more, okay. One more and that's it. Uh oh, that don't look good. I wonder what happened. Trick door! One fool spewed out one word too many. The other fired a musket. 
They fought for freedom. Each for their own. That man. Hard to forget. He asked me if I'd seen his wife. He found his son. The freedom we borrowed from the wealthy and the noble. We believed it was worth the price. He was judged by people long devoid of their freedom. The only things they knew were dust and sweat and anger. We made a nice profit. There was a chance of prosperity. Why would the Renard family want to take over your shop, Grandpapa? For profit and power. It's always the same. It's no different in these times. Today, it's about equality. So that we not... So that not only the aristocrats can live with dignity. Grow up, boy. I saw the truth when they attempted to sentence my son, your uncle, to death. It suddenly dawned on me that the only things that mattered were the power I never had and the connections I never cared for. You wanted to be righteous while the injustice spread like a plague. You should not be sorry. That's me talking, not Frederick. I thought that was weird. You wanted to be righteous while the injustice spread like a plague. You should not be sorry for that. I am not, but I would rather your brother lived, so I still had two sons. You have a brother, Daddy? Where is he? He died a long time ago before you were born, son. Why did he die, Daddy? Shut up, little boy. Don't eat. Don't talk so much while eating. Your uncle went to war, and he died in battle. Your generation will soon realize the extent of the damage we inflicted upon the world. In the past, decent people like Pochard never had to worry about courts or tribunals. But now? Do you even consider the possibility that Pochard was guilty? No, not Mr. Pochard. He was no guiltier than any of us, son. Keep an eye on the Renards. <coughs> I don't remember. Okay, now, Dad's mad. Bernard is really mad. And he hates me. My wife is mad. I hate my family. And... Hey, you signed off on the use of deadly force against the protesters, so my family doesn't even want to talk to me right now. One more day, I think, is what we're going to be doing. doing. Day five. Act one, Liberté. Day five. <laughs> All right. So whatever this is, nobody wants him acquitted. Uh, the revolution wants him to go to prison. My family and the common folk want him dead. Let's check out the hierarchy. Ah, Elliot and Roland. Okay. A courtesan known in every nook of Paris that is worth mentioning. A lady of leisure born in Scotland and living in Paris as an alleged spy for the English. In order to survive, she has been forced to master diplomacy like one of the deputies of the National Convention. There's no doubt that her profession has taught her, has helped her establish relationships. It is unofficially said that if an aristocrat wants to escape from Paris, then Grace Elliot is the one to speak to. And Rowan. The Minister of Internal Affairs. Thanks to his resourceful wife, who controls his career from the shadows, he has gained a position in government and become a prominent member of the Girardin. He does not hide his support for the monarchy, maintaining that it will create balance between a bloody revolution and the tradition that unites all French generations. Okay. <coughs> Let's take a look. What's going on? We have a hidden enemy. It's impossible to know all your... Oh, that's old. My bad. We have a bad relationship with, relationship with our elder son. So we have negative three to our revolution relations. The common people hate me. Well, they really dislike me. The revolution kind of dislikes me. So we're probably going to kill whoever this dude is. Oh, wait a minute. That dude's in uniform. Case file compiled by Fabrice Poli. 
treason and corruption. In the dock sits Matthew Burrell, the former commander-in-chief of the National Guard, the guy I just gave authority to. The defendant stands accused of causing the death of 34 people who took part in a demonstration against monarch monarchic authority. Around, so remember the king is still king because that he got deposed after he was brought back from Varin. Around 3 p.m., two spontaneous groups of protesters stumbled upon each other in one of the streets leading to Pat Place Vendome. A quarrel broke out between the supporters and opponents of Citizen Capé, with both sides engaged in a heated argument. None of the involved parties managed to gain the upper hand, and they quickly resorted to name-calling and public threats, because they're classy. Soon, a National Guard detachment led by the defendant, Matthew Burrell, arrived on the scene. According to eyewitness testimony of Blase Fosse, Commander-in-Chief Burrell stood himself between the two groups alone and attempted to talk sense into them. He was quickly shut down by the protesters. A few of them vocally accused the Commander-in-Chief of violating their freedom of speech. A rock flew over Burrell's head. He then walked up to the regiment that, until this point, had stood away from the crowds. The commander-in-chief ordered them to load their muskets and aim at the protesters. He shouted to the mob that they should leave, which the people of France, of course, ignored. Then, as Fosset testified, another rock barely missed his head. This time, it managed to hit one of the soldiers in the chest, leaving him breathless for a moment. Burrell ordered the troops to fire. Bullets reached 34 people in total on both sides of the protest. So the protesters also had guns. During his arrest, Burrell tried to explain that he had the tribunal's opinion, which he state, which stated he could use force if needed. He tried to defend himself with similar opinions from the conventions. Prosecutor Tinville did not care for such explanation, and his fiery speech convinced the deputies to dismiss him. Now he is trying to convince the judge to impose an additional punishment. Uh, okay. Did he confess? What was the reason for the commander's resignation? And what was the first thing commander asked the crowd after separating the feeding sides? Don't know. Okay. So. The defendant may introduce himself. We all know who the villain is. Matthew Burrell. Commander-in-Chief of the National Guard. Shut up already! Let us proceed directly to the testimony. All right. So, oh my God, we have nine items, six cate five categories, and nine questions. One trap. Okay, tribunal uh, order load musket is a course of events. Okay. <laughs> Okay, tribunal's opinion is just defense. Ooh, we don't want acquittal questions. <laughs> Causing death is the accusation. Injured soldier might be the extenuating circumstances or course of events. Okay. Okay, we're done with defense. So we have five items, four categories because personality's out. We have five questions, three mistakes, and one trap. Oh. It's a condemned aware of the severity of the charges. You understand that 34 civilians citizens were killed. Those who were killed were aggressors who dared to attack a soldier. All 34 of them? No, he was hit by a rock thrown by a single person, but before that, another rock flew over my head. I had reason to believe that the mob would become violent. But that's exactly why you were sent there, to prevent violence. And I did. Several people died, but the rest of the citizens are safe. My dear Jeep's a real piece of work. He's not commander in chief anymore. He's still a bastard, though. 
I, th I think he did confess. So, um, any thoughts, chat? Protesters were the continuing circumstances? No, that's the trap. Prote okay. Recklessness, personality. Okay, freedom of speech, circumstances. Okay, fervor with circumstances. Okay, dismissals, course of events, recklessness is accusation, freedom of speech is accusation. Okay, we did it! Thank you, everybody. Okay, so some of the witness. All right, now remember, we have to, something about what he yelled. Please introduce yourself. Please, for said, Monsieur de Juge, I'm a simple blacksmith citizen. Do you confirm being a witness of the events that are the cause of our gathering today? Yes, I was a witness. I mean, I was there. I saw everything, and I want to talk about it. I really do. Whoa. Can the accused recall what people from both sides were saying? I'd rather not. Why? Because they were vulgar, Monsieur le Juge. They speak curses out of Robespierre at Citizen Cafe. I say, I'd say these accusations were false. Please give us an example so we may understand their nature. Goat fucker, bad swerver. Bad swerver? Down cop. That's what they said about the commander chief. They also said Citizen Cafe was enough. Okay, hold on. We need, what was the reason for the resignation and what was the first thing commander asked of the crowd? Who attacked first, the crowd or the guard? <laughs> I'd say the crowd. They said something about that poor soldier. And after that? Well, they started shooting. Wait, there were no, there was no order? I didn't hear any words, but it was loud and it all happened so fast. Oh, that doesn't sound good. Were you given a reason for your dismissal? Multiple reasons. I will not address all of them, but the one that wounded me the most was my supposed incompetence. You caused the death of many people have died in the revolution, and yet the murderers are members of the convention or judges of the tribunal. Oh! Oh! The accused should choose his words more carefully. That is slander, a tool of the monarchist machine. Bear me your speeches. If you had any decency left in you, you would remain silent. If we let you go, would you go back to your duty? No. Now I can see that being a scapegoat is the best I could have hoped for here. A deputy or a judge makes a mistake, so they convict a soldier. That's how it's always been and how it will always be. Let's behead a politician! So, incompetence. Oh, wait. Now, what was the first thing Commander asked of the crowd after separating the shooting sides? That's what we need. Why did the citizens stand between the fighting groups? I know for a fact that you can decrease tension with reason and mediation of a third party. I was not involved with either of these groups. Wait. Do you mean to say you are not a supporter of the revolution? During these events, I was a soldier and an officer first and foremost. I could not allow myself the comfort of political views. Why? The security of people was the most important thing. Citizens from surrounding houses first, protesters second. Since we are far beyond those events, I take this lack of a clear answer as evidence for your support for the monarchy. I will always remain loyal to Prince and her people. Okay, so he did. Okay, he didn't. Okay. What words did you use when addressing the crowd? There we go. That's what we need. I asked them for a moment of silence, and then they were quiet. And then when they were quiet, why they were fighting. That's when the peace ended, and both sides started throwing accusations. Maybe you shouldn't have intervened. Maybe you only agitated the crowd more. How? By asking for a moment of silence? Did you say anything else? I was trying to shout over the crowd. 
Someone accused me of being a spy trying to silence them and suppress their freedom of speech. Was that your aim? My aim was to prevent bloodshed. As you can see, it was impossible. All right, so we got all the answers we need. Silence. Let me make sure. Wait, asking for more. Asking for more. Okay, yep. Bam, we got the report done. Now, we could keep going, but we've got the jury completely on our side. We've got everything answered. Do you want to keep going or should we just kill them? And make everybody except the revolution happy. Let's take a look. That's kind of big. That's terrible. And that's terrible. Okay. Uh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. So, the, the, see this? I love this about this game. People are more opinionated on prison than they are of acquittal. The crowd would be more upset by sending him to prison. They're like, we would love death penalty. We would dislike acquittal and hate prison. But that just means that the crowd, the common folk, are not like a single monolithic thing. I think acquittal would like make the people who hate him kind of happy and the people who love his actions very happy. So there are multiple factions inside one faction. So that's pretty cool. Anyways. Uh, the accused not think that the order to load muskets may have been issued too early. Why? Because it could have further aggravated the crowd that was already outraged. The people of Paris have an ugly history of impaling heads on spikes. I had a sizable mob before me that was quite obviously ready to attack us at any moment. No, the order was not issued too early. More than that, we should have started shooting as soon as we arrived instead of wasting our time. <coughs> wasting our time trying to calm them down. So you believe in brute force rather than diplomacy? If diplomacy had any chance of success in this situation, deputies of the convention would have been sent instead of the guard. Yet, none of them decided to show up. I wonder why. Was one, how was one of your soldiers injured? He was hit in the chest with a rock. He fell, and for a moment, he could not catch his breath. Did you try to calm the crowd after the incident? Prosecutor, you must be joking. Why would you say that? They wanted blood. Their own or ours, it did not matter. They just wanted it spilled. And you gave them what they wanted? Excuse me, that's me. I had good reason and a document in my hand. It, I was also responsible for the lives of my subordinates. You chose to take the people's choice. Does a document come from God? Do you see yourself as a reckless commander? No, I think I am calm most of the time comes with age and experience. Yet you stood between hostile groups without any guards. That indicates something quite different. It's called bravery. I would not send a regular soldier. I risk my own life and hope that seeing a high-ranking officer would make them come to the senses. Bravery is something you would not understand. So it did not work? No, it had the opposite effect. There's no way I could have expected that outcome. But you were there to expect Expect exactly such an outcome. All right, I'm not asking the last question. I doubt it'll go down, but we got the jury on our side. So, death penalty it is. Uh, and then that's the end of the zoo of... Let's see how far we are. That's two hours. That's good. I hereby sentence Mathieu Borel to death by guillotine. Souls of the victims may now rest in peace. Let him share the fate of those he shot. Aw, oh, he didn't con What? Oh. Because the actual crime was treason and corruption. Gotta be careful. Oh, I took out one reputation. That's good. Alright, let's go kill him. I just noticed that after I clicked it, 
that uh, the uh, thingy in the top left corner was animated. So yeah, he's already got an X. Maybe I could win the Cards of the Crowd. Yeah, let's do it. They are already intrigued. <clears throat> so let's try speaking to the common folk. Okay. Well, let's see. Now, if you don't have influence points, you can cr guess. They're probably like no of opinion on the revolution, and they're kicked off by the crime, so they're bullheaded. No, they're emotional. They're attached. Bullheaded about the revolution. Okay, bullheaded. We know it's aggressive. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. We picked aggressive last time. The correct approach isn't always the same, but that's a whole different thing. Okay. Uh, attached. We did manipulative last time, if I recall. Um, but uh, on this one, the defendant. I don't think that they care. I'm gonna, uh, manipulative is the safe bet. I'm going to guess careless there. But the revolution, let's, let's go aggressive. Oh, strong, strong, and strong. Let's, let's do what's, what's green. Perfect. Uh, see, it's green. Um, it's, out, it's outlined very slightly. There are no shades of gray to crime. Only guilt or innocence. They like that. Careless. Crown. Come, let the accused have a word with the guillotine. And aggressive. Uh, by the way, careless, I think, is more like, like flippant or carefree or whatever. So These criminals think that we are tolerant, that because we are tolerant, we are also weak. That's enough for us to kill them. Okay, the crowd is intrigued, and we got plus three reputation. So we're doing great with reputation. That'll help a lot. Your scapegoat will die so that you can walk free. I wonder if your conscience will let you sleep at night. All right, you're dead. I love the crowd. The crowd changes almost every time. Well, it changes every time, but it does repeat every now and then, I think. Look at all the smiling faces, right? <clears throat> He's ours! There can be no more demeaning experience for Revolution in Paris than the escape of Citizen Capet. He escaped, slipped right from their hands, and the Revolution now seems feeble and weak. The people resemble a child that could easily be duped by anyone. However, the Republic can quickly compose itself thanks to a postmaster and his people who were able to catch the fugitives escaping to Montmede, Montmede, whatever. Ordinary citizens led to the fall of a monarch. You will have a chance to serve the Republic as well for Citizen Capet will face the tribunal tomorrow. You will choose how he will be remembered as a traitor and a coward, or as an unlucky statesman. If it were for the prison guards to decide, there would be, there would be only one outcome. I could either let him get roughed up in prison, or leave him alone till the trial. Let let's let let's be fair, and lead him to uh, leave him alone to the trial. All right. Okay. Everybody should be happy. That goes up a little bit. That goes up a decent amount. The wife goes up a little bit, and the little boy doesn't care because he's unaware of all that. So, now, here's the thing. Tomorrow, we'll be trying Citizen Capet, the former King Louis the Sixteenth. So, we could do all this stuff, which would be really helpful, but unlock more question effects in court. Hold on. I'm going to look that up. Like I say, I, I don't... Oh, oops. I don't know what that means. Um, question effects? Do you know what that means, chat?
So, yeah, I don't quite understand what that means. All right, well, uh, well, let, let's. I spend time with the family or oh my goodness I mean this is one of the, the biggest trials of our life of our life oh well let's do that that's down a tiny bit that's down a bit she, she okay then he okay that's fine more question effects I'm not sure what that means so that's the end of the day, and that's the end of the stream for now. End of the Let's Play, we'll continue tomorrow. So, thanks everybody for hanging. I really greatly appreciate it, and I really hope... Oh, look, look who it is! It's Citizen Cafe. And he's dead. I killed him. Sentenced to the guillotine. Ah. <sighs>